<laughs> hey guys, this is Maticus with Say It Slate. Welcome back. I'm here with my friend Porter Westcott. I'm really excited to introduce my longtime friend Porter. I've known him for quite some time and just give him a bit of history here. He is a professional adult content creator. Surprise, surprise, because that's all that we interview here. So go ahead and grab yourself a drink because you're going to need one. You're going to need it. Boop, boop. We have water, but you know, oh. it's actually G. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump into your, your crazy life story. You were telling me in the elevator that it seems like you've lived so many different lives and just from an outsider, you know, outside perspective in, I, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't even, I don't even know that much about you, like when it comes to the things you've done before I've met you. Yeah, it's, it's definitely felt like such a whirlwind. I, I'm turning 36 this next month and you start looking at things that come in cycles and waves and you start recognizing patterns in life. And it's, it's definitely, it has definitely been a nice decade to experience so much. I'm very, I'm very fortunate for the experiences that I've had. I, I think that you are, and I can agree with that. We'll talk about that some more, too. <laughs> we want to know how you got into that fortune. So backing it all the way up to, you know, when you were a personal trainer, that's where we're going to start this journey. Cool. You know, because you have lived such a long life, and we only have yeah. an hour segment. So. <laughs> so let's go back to 2014, 2015 era when you were a personal trainer. What made you want to be a personal trainer to begin with? Yeah, well, I always was a little bit more active. Even as a kid, I was a gymnast and a cheerleader and I went into, you know, a high school for human sciences. So I was always kind of on the gear to be something in the medical profession. The body was also, also very, yeah, a little anatomy. You know, yeah, all of the anatomy. So that just kind of spiraled into what I, what I wanted to do was help people, you know, understand mm -hmm. how their bodies work and how their bodies move and it's not always about going to the gym and so i started training a few clients during spin classes i also did some pri private clients out at their personal homes at their gyms and yeah that's how kind of things curated okay so you it sounds like to me it was you almost make it sound like it was so easy, you know, so let's, let's be a little brutal almost here. Like, so you said you had a couple clients, Yeah. you know, you, you definitely wanted to work in the body. You'd have, you got that, you know, definitely. You work in the body. Was it what you expected? Well, at first it really felt like it was beginning to, to set a brand. You had to, you know, in this, in the era of social media now, How are we gonna do that again? in the era of social media, you know, getting to what it was, you had to start building a brand and, yeah. and then they based a lot of your pay on like I, I worked for a spin studio for a bit mm -hmm. and it was how many how many butts can you put in the seats you know and then the classes became you're not doing enough and it's like you're teaching me how to do this class but I'm having plenty of attendance so why why do you care how I can teach my class mm -hmm. So it just became this whirlwind of not allowing me to kind of coach and do what I wanted to do. Right. 5 a.m. classes <laughs> and, you know, spending six days a week was rough for a while. <laughs> I, mean, I, I can imagine. I, I worked with some people that did it three times a day. Some I, kind of cult. No. Yeah. How, how it's totally that? a cult. Yeah. You know who you are, Soul Cycle. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I'm going to go again. You're freaking crazy. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that it didn't work out for you, but, you know, at the same time, pretty excited for you. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many things that that changed through that because you started to learn your your worth and your value. And I just kind of want to build that story background on your your personal trainer life and like wh where you were because we're looking at the build like your vulnerability uh, before we go into the storyline. I feel like you moving into the porn industry to probably clarify where I was in training and, and when I started porn and all mm -hmm. of these different things. So the very first thing I started doing was dancing. Mm -hmm. I was a go-go boy doing amateur strip contests from Austin to Houston to Dallas and like doing a cycle and just winning contests for a while. Mm -hmm. Got into porn after that. Oh, okay. Personal training came after porn. Okay, okay. Got all Personal backwards. training, yeah, which is fine. Yeah. I've always, but I was geared to do personal training. Fitness stuff was always in my. It actually, it's better. Um, I think, I'm, so I'm curious. Like I, I remember you actually talking about like you were doing this, like this going around dancing at different clubs. Yeah, yeah that that rings a bell. Um, you're doing like the amateur strip offs and stuff, trying to like win those monies, right? So exactly. Everybody knows that there's amateur strip offs in the local cities. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. But you said you like school wasn't for you. When in your mind did you just get to like to the point? 
you're like, you know, or who approached you or how did you find your way? Was it the first place you reached out to? It wasn't. It was actually like I was living with a friend of mine recently. A friend of mine at the time was also doing another film studio. He had an exclusive contract. I was friends with him. We started living together with his husband. A few of our friends would always be over. And it just got to a point where it was fun to show off. It was fun to... I was always fun and, and, and loved you know, showing off at that age. It was getting on, getting behind camera was not a scary thing for me. Yeah. You know, I wish I could relive that a little bit sometimes. I'm like, the world's scarier today. <laughs> but I think there were two or three studios that we kind of sent my photos off to. I went to Hotel Zaza and, and did some risque photos and sent them off to the different studios to kind of figure out which one was for me. Sean Cody was one of them. Randy Blue was the other one, which is who I actually decided to go with. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much of the industry I hear that I'm very fortunate in the industry choice I made as well, because that particular studio was always pretty much on the up and up, in my opinion. I never really yeah. saw anything that... Some other models have horror stories, and I'm like... <laughs> well, the same... <sighs> Not with my, no, not with Randy Blue. Okay, it, it, but as a whole, when you talk as a whole, <laughs> as you talk about the industry, people sometimes talk about different traumatic experiences they had during mm -hmm. their studio work, and I was like, "Geez, like that, I, I don't even that didn't happen." Yeah, <laughs> you like can't relate. Yeah, can't relate to that at all. <laughs> Which I guess again, fortunate, but yeah, I know that's very lucky. The first thing that came to mind when you said like, "Hey, like." I was already doing porn, you know, before I went into personal training. That's something that like really hit me and struck a chord because like every, every porn star does, says that. Every <laughs> escort yeah. is, a, is a personal trainer. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot easier to just bill clients, you know. Uh, I actually, yeah. a lot of it was more in my, my modeling world. So, I mean, even mm -hmm. down to like taxes, you can, it, it works out in everybody's favor when mm -hmm. you have a business. Yeah. So, and modeling is a particular business. I'm going to get audited now, but hey. Yeah. Well, I mean, how many years has it been? You're pretty old now. Yeah. I'm no, I'm just kidding. Look at this gray. <laughs> no, you look so good. You look so good. I don't, I don't know what he's doing. That's insane. Okay. So you have that one. And then, so you, it sounds like you had it really easy, you know, compared to other people. I don't want to say it's super Not easy, easy. But Not I, easy. I, I'm curious to like to know like what were the hardships because like you know going into porn you're like getting behind the camera this is all exciting and fun and for people that are listening it's, it's exciting and fun but it, it's not that simple is it it's it is not that simple you know a lot of the balances some people have these great attitudes and they go in and say fuck everyone who cares what they think and I'm gonna do my thing and then you start to realize that everyone has their challenges whether it's being shy in front of all the cameras or the lighting starts to get to you because they're, I mean, you're under so much pressure to do yeah, all of this. To come. <laughs> yeah. I laid on like an elevator floor for maybe 45 minutes waiting for a model to kind of get to that point. And it was like, we all have trouble. It's okay. But you kind of have to sit there and hold it for the scene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really, he's like, I really want it. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> 45 okay. minutes. Okay. No, that was like Jet Set Studios was was one of the studios that we used back then. They built like mm -hmm. an elevator specifically for this scene. That's so awesome. Back when we we're still filming for DVD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they, they use some of those old sets now still in LA where people can rent them out on Pure Space. Oh, cool. <laughs> right? They're like, okay. oh, yeah, I'm on a private jet. I'm on an elevator. Right. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, girl. I was like, why is there like no back to the airplane right, here? Right, right. You know? Okay, so, you know, you, did, you really didn't make it sound that bad, you know? You had to wait so, for someone to come. No, 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 that wasn't the bad thing. <laughs> so those are the fun parts and the memories that come up because I try to focus on the good memories. Yeah, because, of course. You know, those bad memories are what set me personally back. Mm -hmm. Thinking about the bad starts to outweigh the good. So if you always just think about the good, you don't think about the bad. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely sandwich it with some good, you know? <laughs> but I, I, I think, like, I think there's a lot of people that, like when we you see these type of interviews that are always talking positive and it should because like the space should be positive we want people to be, be interested in it yeah but it's hard like you know from like 
getting paid, getting booked, make, making your, your uh, becoming that personal right. uh, person, you know, like creating your brand. Like, how was that for you? Do you think that was easy? Obviously, you were really liked. I mean, you're in it there for a while. I was. It was pretty fun to have the experience of, you know, it's like, oh, I'm flying out to L.A. once mm -hmm. a month doing a scene for a day. I mean, that that is the work. You have to be prepared for knowing how your body is going to react to certain things. So the night before, don't be a dumbass and eat some stupid meal that you know your body's not going to react too well. Yeah. Get some good night's sleep. <laughs> like, like things like this. It's just those basics. But the rough part is you have to keep you have to keep those. You have to keep structured in that way to continue going. I think the mental part is what it really kind of takes a toll on you over time. The more popular you get, the more positive comments, but the negative also exists. And that actually exists way more because people never comment positivity mm -hmm. because they enjoyed it and that's it. Yeah. They leave. Yeah. But the comments that start are all of the, the negativity that as a community, we should, I'm going to say we should be ashamed of ourselves of knocking down other people in our community because we all need to stand together. Yeah. But that's the hard part. <laughs> I definitely think that extends outside of our community, but I, I do agree with you. All, well, but. I'm not trying to win over everybody, but maybe yeah. our community needs somewhere. some structure. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. But I think it, it, it comes down to like Yelp, you know, like no one's yeah. leaving positive reviews unless they're dedicated, right. you know, like they're, they're like, oh, I'm going to help you. I'm going to Google you. I'm going to whatever Yeah. when they're mad. And I think it's the same thing when you like underperforming, you know, sure. commenting, but you do have those dedicated fans you that do. are on every video <laughs> and every post, you know, they're, right. they're there for you. Yeah. But I'm sure it doesn't outweigh the, the negativity. It, it, it has to balance and that's what keeps you going. Like I feel like the past six months have been a little rough for me, but I'm finally starting to get back on the up and up in my mind, you know. It always coincides, again, seasonal depression is a real thing for sure. You have a lot of moments that teach us and like chapters that have to end before new can begin. So definitely going through some of the similarities of the end of my career when I just kind of shut it down back then. I'm starting to feel a little bit now because it's that where does the gap start and stop? Right. How quickly do you progress into this again? Right. So you did you did mention that before. So for th those that don't know, it's like you you did abruptly stop like doing you know adult, adult performing and yeah. now you're back in it. Well, yeah. I mean, not as as I was mm -hmm. at one point, which it's unfortunate that I think studios were not as protected maybe as they should have been. But like now or then? Both. I think now. What do you mean by protected? I think we relied so much on the studios for our entertainment, you know, a decade ago. Mm -hmm. DVD, video. I mean... Truly, studios are what kept the porn business alive for however long. The sense of losing the studios now to OnlyFans or Just for Fans or any of the other sites, I think it gives so much freedom to everyone to, to make a living off of this. But the studios are suffering because of it. There's not enough for them to pay models to really truly produce big, big films anymore. And I, I don't know if we should have protected the film industry at that point. You know, there's right. there's a loss now. I suppose. Maybe. I mean, is that just me being weird and thinking? No, no, I, I, I agree with you. And I think that you're right in some aspects. And you know, obviously, we all, everybody's entitled to their positions. Of on course. Things. I think with me, I, I've seen studios make adaptions. Uh, yeah. many, many of the studios have made adaptions to where they can actually sell OnlyFans subscriptions for their models mm. and I think that was a really smart move that you that know? is a smart move rather than completely lose their models right <clears throat> because a lot of them said like yeah you can't do only fans but the potential for them to make money on only fans was far greater than they can make at the studio it is it is but something that we're not considering is something that goes through my mind is the protections that those studios provided I, I agree, but I think the uh, with on the studio side and compared to OnlyFans, OnlyFans is about you're, you're sharing your life and your experience on a more personal level. Compared to a studio, is there 
they're giving like a movie or like you're creating some type of scene. Mm -hmm. um, people are doing similar things, kind of, I guess, on OnlyFans, but nothing like the this, this studio work that's being done. Correct. Yeah, yeah. But is it is it really is it the industry's fault, or are we are we changing? Do the do the do the studios need to continue to adapt to? Not necessarily. Does it mean do they like you know, they, do they need to change their style or like look right. at you know what? How do they need to stay relevant? You know, I, I don't think that there there was a way that we could protect them. I don't think that's possible. And from from my perspective, I think people are, are raging against everybody that they possibly can. People yeah. want to make more money now more than ever. True. You know, and they want a piece of the pie, and the studio has been taking most of it, yeah. just like most companies have. True. Yeah. I think in in theory, thinking through like OnlyFans work, where you're just working with an individual. I'm sure it's not talked about a lot or it's it's not exposed and people feel ashamed for it, but the interactions when you were working with the studio, in my personal experience, mm -hmm. is it all seemed very business-oriented. And I know that there were three people in a room with me and an individual that you have no idea what this person's going to do if they're alone. Right. But in a room full of people, it holds this person accountable to where they understand they're coming for a job they didn't all of a sudden just meet another person and right. like, oh, let's film some content. And then you're in a position that may not have all of the protections that a studio would have provided. Absolutely. I th yeah, I think in that case, it makes a lot of sense to have like that, that protector, additional people, obviously yeah. your camera people. I mean... Also, they'll chase people down if they, they see your content's being reused. It, it sounds like a great business opportunity as well. <laughs> Just yeah. provide the, all right, here's the two cameramen, the yeah. lights are already set, and just start making a, a scene house, yeah. you know? <laughs> we were talking about, kind of talking about that earlier, like it's like the management of the OnlyFans yes. um, could be something that you'd see adapted to. But I, I think that like, you know, going on the additional industry route of, of creating pornography through a studio is not expensive. And like there's, there's expenses that are relayed to that from like the way that, you know, like from taxes and everything that they're having to, they're, they have to manage or like how many studios are allowed to be open, where they're, where right. they can be open, how they can, you know, be occupied. Yeah. I Compared guess to only fans, you can be anywhere. That's something, oh, except for in like Ohio, right? No, oh, really? Utah. I, I, I don't Utah. know. You can't be in Utah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's outlawed in Utah, just like Pornhub got outlawed here or whatever. Mm -hmm. It just, I didn't even think about, you know, the politics around studios now. I guess, yeah. like, being in L.A. is the only place that really we thought there could exist, but, I mean, you have Miami, got you have, you know, you got everywhere now. Well, we have, we have, we have, like, what is it, Next Door Studios is here in Austin, right, or a portion of it. That's they, a great question. Yeah, they, the Next Door Studios <laughs> is here. I was looking at you as if you knew. And then we have, we have, I'm not going to say it because I don't think they're occupying themselves correctly, but there are other studios here that represent large quantities of people, you know, and, and I think like, but they're doing it through like a different way because they went like the traditional route of being a studio, they probably wouldn't be able to do it. True. All your underground stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Underground raves. Porn. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But I, I, something that I don't really talk about is like, you were talking about like prostitution. It's a whole separate segment. Sure. But and say that you ever like to get caught or in trouble, like we're actually, I've heard people make jokes about this. They're like, we're actually just making a porn. Like, what do you think about that? Interesting. You know, like I got a contract here. Hmm. <laughs> we're just, we're just making a little home video, babe. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I, I don't see the harm. <laughs> right. Because you pay like co-stars like for, well, maybe not you, but people have paid co-stars to work with them. Before. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's a business transaction yeah. involved into it. If you're if you're trying to film with someone, I mean, hopefully, both of you are making money off of the content. So, I've seen a lot that like the don't argument even, they didn't even have OnlyFans, and they would be willing to record with you at, at a nominal fee. Mm. And but now, like OnlyFans requires everybody to have OnlyFans in order to be on there. But, Correct. Yeah, you have to be a registered model mm -hmm. to actually be in the content. Yeah, that's a hard question. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah. What would you do? I say it's my business and my body and my <laughs> choice. <laughs> well, yeah, that's not the way to tell the police officer. Mr. Officer is my business, my body, my choice. It's my body, my choice. My choice. And we have a contract. We're doing a porn. Okay. <laughs> I have the app for it. <laughs> yeah, look, we're fine. I was, I'm, it's, recording it's taxable, a, I promise. On my phone. That's security <laughs> camera right there. That's, that's where it's coming from. Yeah. This is not hilarious. I, I still want to swing right back into the personal trainer thing. Yeah. So we... You know, you were 
you're doing porn, you want to be a personal trainer, you're like, all right, I want to do this, which is a very similar path like we said before. And then like, did you stop doing it? Or was it just like not, you're like, I want to focus more on studio? So... Or did you keep it up? When I ended studio, got into personal training, after personal training... Oh, okay. Is that what you're saying? No, okay, so I didn't realize you ended studio, so you ended studio, then went into personal training, and then what? And then started doing property management. Okay, I was assuming that you were doing personal training simultaneously, like most do, Mm. um, while doing porn. Not until the end was yeah. I starting personal training. I think there's there's a quite a few years in there that you know I was doing not only studio work we were doing live shows as well. Mm-hmm. Live shows is where I think I connected the most with people. Really? Yeah. So I know I'm gonna go back a little bit. Okay. So studio work was doing doing well, but cam shows started to become a bigger thing because like. Every time we filmed for Randy, we would always go in like the day before and the night that we arrived, we would do a Randy Blue live for an hour. Oh. So there's a quite a quite a few like old scenes of just like Randy Blue live recorded stuff that I'm like, oh, that was such a fun <laughs> little time. Um, but we would do live shows, which started to become a bigger thing that more people wanted. So... At some point, we did Randy Blue Live to where we had full like cam shows going on. So I would have all the equipment at my house mm-hmm. and just be in, you know, in my apartment doing film work. It's like the true, the it's like original OnlyFans is what mm-hmm. it was kind of. And you just kind of build up. Did the studio know you were doing this relationship? It was on their sites. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They provided all of the equipment. Mm-hmm. We. We purchased it from them, but they loaned it to us until we paid them back. Okay. So we got all the equipment to set it up in the apartment, and, and we were just doing that. For a while, they even incentivized us to get other people to join cam work, and we would we were getting a percentage cut off of theirs as well, tiered. Yeah. You're saying we a lot. Who, the other who? models. Okay. Okay. So were you living, you were still living with other models at this time? Mm. No, any of the, any of the Randy Blue models Mm -hmm. that were actually on Randy Blue's site Mm -hmm. all had access to the cameras. Got it. It it was, it was a choice, but quite a few of the monthly models, the more, more filmed models, there was maybe like a dozen guys that were always coming in to do a new (laughs) scene, you know? Yeah. There were always people in and out, mm-hmm. but there was a staple few. And we are all the ones who started doing the live cam work and then trying to get other people into it as well. That so was in 2011. Okay. What was the benefit for doing cam work? Well, it was just the, I mean, the original, you got to connect with people. They sold credits mm-hmm. that were point or were per minute. So they would be able to take us private. As long as we were, we were online, we could talk to people, people would come into our chat rooms and people would, we would just talk. I, I could not see them. They could see me. Mm-hmm. It didn't have the ability at that point. And then it would just switch to another screen when someone wanted to take me private. Oh, you didn't have a choice? No. No, there wasn't like an accept. It was <laughs> they're paying. We're going private. <laughs> they're, they want to take you private. And then they were at dollar per minute or whatever. What happens to all the other people that are in the room? They are in a queue until, so they're still in the room, mm-hmm. but it just shows like model in private. And I, the other person is whoever, whoever takes you to private gets to talk to you. And then when their time would run out, it would put me back into the room after I like accepted to, like, go back. to go back into the room. Cause you might need a break after that. Exactly. Yeah. You know, depending on how long, yeah. sometimes it was pretty quick. Sometimes it was yeah. like two or three minutes and then it would go kick me back in. Sometimes it was, you know, hours. It, wow. was, it would just be, dep- it would depend on. So was it completely private or like could other people see or other people hear and see when you're in private? No, that was specifically okay. private. Yeah, gotcha. whatever was being. He's like, let me define point, private. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was just between me and that other, the individual paying to view. 
I guess I was thinking of like you're in a chat room and like say you're like you're watching some live cam model and then like they keep going private and you're like, God damn it, like I just can't stay on somebody. Right. Like it'd be kind of frustrating. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. That's me, the person that's not taking you, <laughs> not taking you private. <laughs> I'm like, why can I? Find You're just someone? seeing all of the in betweens. Yeah, I want the in between. <laughs> I don't, I don't want a private room right now. <laughs> but I guess that's all. It's always about like, do you want to get a private dance? Do you want to get it's the? It's all about the yeah. private. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Well, damn, you you've definitely done it all. I'm surprised you're not like really big on TikTok doing that because that's pretty similar. Well, I guess you can't be naked on there. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, any of the the newer newer technologies, TikTok, Instagram, even I, I, I feel like I did not start any Instagram for, you know, getting into like porn names and adult film work. It's always been a little more to, it was always on Twitter for me. Right. So just keeping it in one place kind of allowed me to segment it in my life and my brain and like Mm -hmm. tuck it away over here. So I know where to go, (laughs) but no, you know, you choose to focus on different things at different points. Yeah. But have you had this like same Twitter this whole time or you had to rebuild it? I had to rebuild. Oh. Yes, it was. I had a blog for a while. That mm-hmm. was like the big thing. And I had quite a few followers on that. But Twitter was something that I might have started. But then everything was pretty much wiped. Yeah. What did you blog about? Um, a group of friends and I always would attend like all of the local prides or we would Mm -hmm. go just touring through, you know, when I would do all of the strip contest, one of my friends would always take photos and we would just add them to this, this blog of me traveling around Texas, like meeting people. Like I've met like Caswell, Amanda Lepore. Like I've actually had really cool private moments with quite a few of them. Um, Some of the drag shows that I went to, like one of the years I went to, uh, a finale of RuPaul and got to meet a lot of the queens there. So nice it, it, stories like that. It was just an entertainment kind of lifestyle, yeah. what I was doing and where I was. You're literally describing OnlyFans. You're perfect <laughs> for it. Drink that. I will get you some more water, okay? I know he's been like, he's like, oh, I don't know if I could take this last sip. <laughs> I'll get you some more. Yeah, that's that's OnlyFans all to the T, boy. We're circling back. We have gone off the timeline a few times. I hope you guys are still with it. You know, and if you're not, suck it. No, <laughs> it is what it is. So we, you, you went in and out of, out of porn. We're going to go back to you were, you know, doing the personal training. But before that, you know, how did you feel like when you first started? You said hit that when you first stopped, I guess. Let's like, let's do that 30, that year and that two years after. Like, how are you feeling? Yeah, I went through a few different transitions with feelings through that because at first when I stopped, it was like kind of getting out was, was not a big deal because, you know, I had a few you know clients that I kept up with through ending that I felt, I felt like for a few years of, of that, I was pretty set for a period of time to where I could be consistent with what I was doing. And, and there wasn't a lot of struggle if you will. But the mental state started to become, look at all the stuff he has. I started getting a lot more hate. It started to become this, don't be that way because it shows, what am I trying to say? I know I'm trying to like figure out where I'm trying to be mysterious. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Not mysterious. It's just you know, you accumulate so much so quickly, and and I had so many opportunities that this lifestyle became, oh, he is having all this fun, but it's because he's having sex for money. Like, yeah. It's like, all of a sudden, it was just, oh, everything's good, but this one thing. Yeah. It, it became this, like, crutch that I kind of also related to, even as, as a kid, you know, I came out at 14, Mm -hmm. lost all of my friends because no homo. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't cool. It's okay. Small town, Texas. I get it. But at that point in time, it was like, Oh, everything's great. He was all this and now, but he's gay. And it's like, Oh, but he's in porn. Mm -hmm. It's just like, people love to shit on you when you're actually just being true to yourself. Pretty nice guy. (laughs) <laughs> You're like, huh? yeah okay <laughs> mm-hmm. but getting into like the feelings it's it's been a long process because i, I started becoming shamed 
for yeah. it. Like people in my family kind of found out and I actually didn't find out. Somebody from high school loved to share things and shared it with, you know, one of my family members and outed me for that. It's like mm-hmm. it was my personal business, but they love to people love to put other people down. It's a risk. It's a risk. Yeah, totally. And of course it became like this huge regret and then oh, it's not something you ever want to be proud of or say, oh, yeah, look at my beautiful things. Yeah, I, I did porn to get them. You know, it was, what do you say? It, it makes other people uncomfortable. I'm a personal trainer. <laughs> I'm a personal trainer. Hey, I'm trainer. a personal trainer. <laughs> I didn't have so much shit. I'm a personal trainer, guys. You, know, you, want, you want a lesson? I could teach you. You could be selling courses, bro. I don't know. Like, you're looking at this all the wrong way. I need you to be more motivated. Yeah. So, but so I'm your personal trainer. Yeah. So I'm a fucking personal trainer. Yeah. I'm like, who the fuck are you training? (laughs) But no, so we're we're gonna go back into into the feelings part. But you're like, all right, say 30 days. You just stopped. Like, were you feeling like you're like, damn, it's so much weight off my back. I'm glad what I did. Like, I'm glad I'm out of it. Or were you like, damn, I wish I missed it. I wish the money I was making this was easier. Or maybe something else. It was pretty kind of blind to like the the stopping for probably like the first year. It it really didn't bother me to be out of it. I enjoyed it while I was in it, but I was on to new experiences. It wasn't something I'm like, oh my God, why did I stop? Like I should have kept going. Yeah. It it didn't bother me at that point. Why? I think everything kind of goes in cycles and waves and you kind of have to accept new opportunities when they come about. And it just kind of was the end of that, that phase for me at that point. I guess. So like being realistic, I would think of like, okay, you said you were making, you know, quite a sum of money doing, you know, production. And then you're like, I'm going to go be a personal trainer, which is really fucking hard. Okay. But yeah, I think any personal trainer that's out there can contest that. Like, like, sure. Yeah. It's hard. And maybe did you already build a clientele? Like, or, like what you, were you still getting money from something else? Like what, what balanced you? Well, I, I think a lot of the assets that I accumulated over that period of time when I was doing film work were also things that I could kind of rely on. You know, I went through a few vehicles that I could just kind of like could, I didn't have to make tremendous amounts of money to kind of maintain what I had. Mm -hmm. I had, everything was, was paid off. So the, the enjoyment was maintaining it all and then doing something on the side that made me happy. How, how was it paid off? Um, through all of the earnings through through content back in the industry. I mean, it was that and doing all of the live shows. Yeah. So just give us an idea of, like, how much do you think that you would make from, like, one, like, film? So film versus, like, scenes I versus was making scenes, between. Yeah, yeah. I mean, somewhere between four to 5,000 a scene mm-hmm. is what I was making at that point. And then doing live shows, sometimes... Sure. Uh, sometimes I was making between, you know, it, it could be 1500 to, you know, 4,000 a night doing, mm-hmm. you know, four or five hours or, or a little longer because mm-hmm. of tips. People also love to, yeah. to tip you and send you gifts and different items. Like it just was a, you know, yeah. the accumulation of all of that yeah. stuff, you know, there was no Amazon wish list then, right? <laughs> No, not yet. No, there was not. Not that. <laughs> it would have been nice. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been nice. It would have been nice. Don't worry. That there were other wish lists though at that point in time. You know. Okay, so you know, you said you were obviously getting paid quite well for you know for for your scene. Yeah, that's that's a lot higher than back, most people. Yeah, back then it was a lot different for sure. Yeah, but that's still way higher than than most were doing. I think like average is like two thousand, three thousand dollars. You're getting paid four to five. <sighs> You don't, you don't think you consider yourself at a higher tier? Maybe I didn't realize it at the time. Yeah. Um, but understanding where we are now, maybe, mm. yeah. Understanding kind of, you know, I, I kind of pr- I pride myself in wanting, like, wanting to be a professional, like arriving ready mm-hmm. and arriving to do the work and, and kind of move on. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the one thing that, uh, you were never curious and yeah. just like, hey, man, like, how much are you making, you know? I think uh, everyone in my studio was making pretty similar. Well, amounts. maybe a different studio. Yeah. No? You're like, just, you're like, oh, we don't talk to those people. We don't talk to those people. <laughs> you talk to your, your, your 
<laughs> yeah, we're not asking them questions. Okay. I'm just such a curious little cat. You know, like, I I like to know. I mean, I kept up with the Randy Blue Boys. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, there were a few guys there that that were always in a good circle. Mm -hmm. um, and then what about, if you don't feel comfortable talking about this, we'll cut it out. But sure. what about sugar daddies? Have you had any experience with sugar daddies or any support from somebody that just wanted to give you things? That one's a difficult one to talk about sometimes because I think the position that that I was in at the end there, I think there was definitely a position that would be considered sugar daddy status. Mm -hmm. They could be really good friends too. I mean, but yeah, you know. it, it, it well, it's been a long relationship mm -hmm. with with a few people over over the course of my life that you know, you end up having a good relationship with this person, whether it was sexual, whether it was, I think a lot of people try to define your relationships in their mind a certain way. And then it puts pressure on you to also define it in that way. Mm -hmm. Because they can't understand why someone would be gifting other people that much money for their joy and happiness. Well, I, I definitely understand that, and I, and I and I agree with you because like it as and even the way that I'm saying it now as a sugar daddy, because I really don't know how to, to find other otherwise. I mean, like it's a really good relationship that I, even I have had experiences yeah. with. It's but people love to give, and especially people that didn't have before. Yeah, and I could see that they want to give you everything they couldn't have, and then if they did have it, they just want you to have a good life, and it doesn't have to be sexual. And I think a lot of people don't want to talk about it. Well, and it's an exchange that people aren't talking about. It's like, yeah, this person might be paying them for, you know, to, uh, giving them gifts and doing all this. And you want to provide the status that he's a sugar daddy. But it's what is the other person providing them? It's my best friend. <laughs> you know? Sure. Groupie. You yeah. know, why do you want to? Why label? I think the word sugar daddy has just been. It has a slight negative connotation to it. Yeah. I feel like a lot of them fill in as like an actual true father figure sometimes, you know, or like yeah, a, a, or a, a best friend man, or a best friend or, or some, someone that just like, I don't know, I enjoy, I, I regret every day turning down opportunities. Yeah. Large ones. Like, you know, for me, if like someone wanted to pay for me to go to college, yeah. want to pay for me to, uh, to buy me a house in Washington and like, well, I'm like, I don't want to live in Washington. It was just like, so, so prideful. And like, I'll do this on my own. And I've heard a lot of conversations that people have been like, oh, would you rather make $100,000 or would you rather be given $100,000? Mm -hmm. Do you know how a lot of people answer that question? Make. They'd rather make it. Yeah. And like, that's so stupid. That's the, that's the, if I can teach anybody anything, take the $100,000 and invest it. Like, make more. Like, why put yourself through so much work? Sure. It's crazy. And you have to kind of go through that process to realize, mm -hmm. oh, shit. Like if I don't accept someone's generosity, someone else is, and they're why do I think they deserve it more than me? That's yeah, that's a good that's a good point too. I almost see, I see some of them like maybe are so like infatuated with one person they might not offer it to someone else. <laughs> you know, it's not True. that it's not that simple. They're like, uh, well, yeah. fuck order. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not gonna give it to him. I'm gonna give it to somebody else. Like no, they're but that's the same. Yeah. Like yeah, they're. Somebody wants I to think get a, a lot gift. of. Um, my connections and any kind of like the relationships that I accrued through through doing studio work and through the live shows was the true connections that people were craving for that I just talked and hung out and danced around or like explored with these people on the internet. Yep. And they kind of fall in love with you. I mean, it, it is <laughs> about the character you fall in love with, the it's, person. It's definitely interesting that you say that because people ask all the time, they're like, how do I get a sugar daddy, you know? <laughs> yeah. And the answer really is, is like, don't look for them. No. You know, just like be a nice person. Yeah. Right? I, I think. <laughs> I agree. I was like, you find a, a, a person, you just, you're just nice all the time, they're, they're going to find you. Yeah. You know, the, people a, out here, I'm like, I'm looking for an allowance. <laughs> I'm like, this much, da, 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 da. like, you, okay, you might, you might get somebody, but they're going to be pretty raunchy. The, you want someone to build a true relationship with. Sure. I guess I know some people get them probably like from like rant men, you know, but it's after being open and, and vulnerable. 
you know, like right. maybe you did go over there to initially as an escort situation, but you, I know people that since they're like, they're like, I opened up and I told them about what I was going through or even on Grindr. Mm -hmm. And then they just like walk into it. Like this person wants to help you. And it's just like, it just makes them so happy. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. You know, all those situations yeah. kind of line up and, and sometimes you just need human interaction. So what would you tell somebody that's looking for a sugar daddy today? Looking for a sugar daddy today, I would tell them to stop looking <laughs> <laughs> and start practicing good habits for yourself and making sure that you're presenting the best you that you can. And someone's going to read the energy you have. And if they happen to want to take care of you and provide a life for you, then accept it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a, it's way more known in, the, in like the male female world. You know, there's yeah. there's so many and it's, and it's expected, but and they could be a lot meaner about it. Hell, but. have you seen the damn shows on whatever <laughs> TLC and other <laughs> networks? Yeah, I mean, I what, a ninety vibes. day fiance or all these people there. There's so much crazy shit going on in the world today. Oh, you're you're saying Come ninety on. day fiance? I'm thinking like Atlanta housewives <laughs> or California housewives, like what it. It's not called California Housewives. What's it called? Well, there's a few a in California. Housewives yeah. series. You there's know, a like few. You, you can tell. I'm like, bitch, this is a situationship. You know, you guys got married. And those are becoming more of a thing. Yeah, you know, it's a deal. Ten years from now, twenty years from now, however, this fucking economy, wherever it takes us, maybe we are gonna have to start having four people in a relationship to support a house. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Whatever pandemic we go through mm. next, where you're like, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, you have like, four, four people to. That's that'd be ridiculous, and overwhelming. I, why can't we start at three? <laughs> you gotta jump. Oh. What, yeah. How do you feel about like like throuples? Um. Could you do it? Should I could it? Yeah, I could for sure. I just think that society is not quite ready, even though I'm consistently ahead of my time like don't think i'm ready to to bring that up in my life yet. yeah but there's that so his partner that's watching <laughs> <laughs> if, he, if he even watches it so you said you're, you're you don't you don't want to bring it up in your life but i'm curious like on this, this is totally segmented on the side too very ADD. Yeah. but on, on a, in a, a throuple relationship is it ever really balanced like people say like i could be in a throuple but like it depends on like what side you're on sure well i think the balance is all about communication in your relationship. I mean, it's whatever is, I yeah. say whatever's behind closed doors is your business, but relationships like that, whether they're sexual or yeah. non-sexual, they all take work. I mean, you have to talk to your friends just as much as you talk to your partner. One, mm -hmm. you're just having sex with one and not the other. Well, yeah, I, I, I used to think that throuples were great. Like when I was married, I tried the whole throuple thing. And me and my ex-husband decided, like, okay, we're going to invite someone to our relationship, right? Yeah. And, to, and they would say, like, they felt excluded. But it was true because, like, when you think of, like, if something was to go wrong or whatever, it was always, like, we'll cut that person, you right. know? And I never, I never realized it until I experienced it as a third. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'll try it later on in my dating life. I tried to enter a relationship with someone I had dated before and they had now had a new partner. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we still have that really good vibrant connection. But I was like, I don't feel included now. They're like, oh, well, we're inviting you on this trip. Like you're good to go. And I was like, oh, this sucks. Well, maybe it's not something that you experienced in your 20s or yeah. even your early 30s. Maybe it's something that develops even later, later in life. Maybe. When you need a little bit more human interaction other than the one person you've been with for 20, 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've seen some, some great relationships that, you know, they, they do open up to that or like, and maybe like these sugar daddy situations <laughs> or whatever. And you, whatever. you need that, you know, yeah. cause like you, you, you're, you do end up being like married to your best friend. You do. You know, I've, I've seen guys that are like get married that are both tops or that are both bottoms. Yeah. And they have to find ways and, to make and things work. And you have work. to find ways to yeah. accommodate your relationship at some point in time. But let's circle back to you, mm. you know, on a standard it's subject. It's always mm. about you. We want we want it to be about you. So sure. you 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 got out of porn, you're you're you know, you did you and you got into real estate management or right? Right. So how? Yes. Why? <laughs> well it all goes back to being a personal trainer. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you mean? <laughs> um I actually 
So I started working as a personal trainer for a few people out in Westlake area. Mm -hmm. And they all had home gyms. So I would go and train them and and kind of evaluate and, and make routine adjustments to kind of their life. And there's there was an opportunity that came available that a property manager was needed. The existing property manager was moving back to California and I was going to take over the position. So uh, for you're skipping, <laughs> you were going to take over the position. Oh, doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, there was a position open <laughs> I was going to take over the position. Where's the middle story here? And, uh, the arsenic, right? Yeah. <laughs> I awarded was, it. I was this individual's personal trainer, and I have a great eye for detail. I've I'm I'm a very organized person. Owning a home, you know, not to like way back when it's like you start developing who you are, and I'm very handy. I have I know, yeah. a very good <laughs> tool collection. I know how to use it. I I change my own oil. I'll rotate my own tires. All the all the shit. Grandparents taught me, parents taught me. So I started maintaining my home myself, doing all of the my own repairs and my own maintenance. So 2014-ish, I started renting my home out, like a little uh, boutique hotel mm-hmm. on back when was HomeAway. Yeah. So started to learn how to manage my own property then and run kind of a, a short, it was a short term rental, 2014. And it taught me a lot about managing homes that, so I knew enough about a home and things that needed to be done that when I was offered that position, it just kind of transitioned into a more f- fulfilling position, one, and more profitable position than being a personal trainer. Yeah. So you make it sound like as if like you were just in a personal training session. It's like we have this opening and it's yours. <laughs> Was it that simple? No, of course. You develop relationships and friendships and, yeah. and, and meet people. Because if you know who I am and if you've ever had a night out with me, I'm going to talk your ear off as long as you'll let me sometimes. <laughs> but then we'll also do it while we're dancing and yeah. having having a good night. And... Mm. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I disagree with you. I think you're a really like a great listener. And I think that's what makes you really special is like you don't just talk about yourself and you do such a good job at like inquiring with people to keep conversation going, which again, guys, if you want a sugar daddy, that's how you do it, <laughs> <laughs> is, is asking questions. You're, you're so incredibly personable. And I don't, I don't know how, you, do you not see that? I do understand that. I, I yes, I do. I enjoy intimate moments with people. I enjoy sharing special memories with people. And I tell people this sometimes when, you know, of course you always have a person who is upset that you forgot their name. And it's okay. It's going to happen. We have met so many people in our lives now that you're, you're going to forget some people's names, but I always remember moments and memories with people Mm -hmm. based on their faces. Like I remember the movie of my life and I can always kind of like pinpoint things. So having those intimate moments with people and listening to them and being genuine and letting people tell you who they are Mm -hmm. and share with you is, is something I really enjoy providing like some spaces for people. Do you really care? I do. Yeah. It's, it's hard because I'm a, a, I'm a healer by, my personality wants to help people naturally. I will do as much as I can to help you in any situation. But sometimes that leaves me a little bit vulnerable because I don't take the chance to heal myself. Mm -hmm. So taking on a lot of people's problems and learning how to balance Mm -hmm. that in your life is kind of where I was the past six months is just trying to really learn and heal because there's a lot of stuff that you just have to go through. (laughs) It's always always easier to work on other people, you know, like always. (laughs) You're like, let me just put myself off (laughs) and focus on all these other things. Uh, Yeah. That that makes a lot of sense. So since you're such a a healer and a helper, 
help me tell your story <laughs> correctly. So let's 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 drive your story in, in, in a quick format, all from 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 your start to where you are now, right? So you so you're getting you're getting back into porn. You've gone through this you know like this journey of six yeah. months. Like let's roll through it. Roll through it. <laughs> From the six months or through the beginning, all the through way the, through the beginning. Give, right. us the, give us the highlight. All right. So in the in the correct time. <laughs> in the correct time timeline, timeline yeah. this time. Okay. So go go boy, porn, living life, <laughs> enjoying my life, personal training, property management, healing. This past year has been tapping my feet back in. You know, figuring out who I want to be doing a few scenes here and there. I did some really fun scenes last April. So it's almost a year now since I chose to like step back into a studio mm-hmm. to film. I've enjoyed interacting with people. That's mm-hmm. where I'm at. You know, I'm learning how to present myself again in a yeah. way that I want to, in the way that makes me feel good, not necessarily how everyone wants you to be. Did you miss it? I, I miss how freeing it was to express yourself in ways that like, you know, <laughs> you start talking to family members and it's like, I've like, I've wanted to take off my clothes all my life. <laughs> I, I think I was running around on the trampoline, like trying to take my diaper off and throw it when I was a kid. <laughs> and then even to like, you know, Halloween costumes are always fun. Like, Oh yeah. You know, always the least amount of clothes possible. Right. <laughs> Surprise, I'm a slut. Yeah. <laughs> but I also realize that I dance like a stripper still to this day. Yeah. So I have a question, and I don't mean this in any, in the, like, in the, in the wrong way. I don't know how to say it, I guess. Yeah. But, like, so, like, coming back into porn, I, like, I think, like, when, you, when you're working in, like, in the adult content creation, you know, world is you're really known. You're really well known, and people know who you are. And... It going into, you know, working and managing real estate, you know, past, you know, you know, helping people with their fitness journeys, people still know who you are. Yeah. But now it's it's becoming less. And you are like, you know, I know you said you want to live till you're 100. Yeah. Uh, who doesn't, right? Right. But like, but do you think of like going back into porn is, is a way to stay relevant? Lately, I've actually been thinking more of it as a, a just a stepping stone in my life. I've realized quite a few things have cycled in this like 12 year cyclical Mm -hmm. rotation. I I feel like things that were happening in 2012 are starting to cycle back in my life. And my, my dog actually passed away this year and I had him since 2012. So it was, it's very, very triggering. Yeah. Well, and it's also like when I first started to Mm -hmm. like thinking there's a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. And when you go through these journeys of healing and and learning who you are, you start to realize like, it's just a documentation of, of my life. You know, I have already done it. So what's, what truly is the fear of presenting myself again? I still feel like I take great care of myself. So, you know, (laughs) I do, I do. Like I said, I value my life. I would love to live to 100 years old. So putting in the care and the attention to my body is a long-term thing, not just fad diets and bulk and do all that. It's just like consistency. But I want to see that again. I want to see my comparisons. Like how many people do you know? It's like having that reunion again of like the playgirls coming back out to do, you know, 30 years yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not many. I, I think what I initially like spoke to you, you know, I didn't realize that you re- re-entered, but a lot of people regret being in porn. You know, they regret it so much. And like, you don't meet a lot of people that get out. They stay in forever. Yeah. You know, and I wonder like, you know, has that, has that ever been a, a problem for you? Have you ever regretted it? Have you ever wished that you did something different instead? There was a part of, of life that, you know, being in the adult film industry was was scary to think about your future because people will always remember, oh, you know, his nudes are on the Internet or oh, there's videos of him having sex on the Internet. It's like 
you can never do anything. It's like, you can never be in politics or you can never hold an office in this because that's what people told us. Right. But it's not true. Well, maybe it's going to be true for the next 10 years because... Right. We've got some Republicans, you know, <laughs> that love to love to hate. But if you start looking at position where we are now, like I'm 36 years old, 10 years from now, you know, 15 years from now, a lot of the older individuals are going to be dead, and we are going to be yeah. looking for representation. But those, you start thinking about what? Why am I worried today about expressing myself? again, for reasons that, oh, I'm never going to be able to hold office or I'm never going to be able to make an uh, impact because that's how the people today feel. 15 years from now, there's going to be so many people that their stuff's on the internet. Yeah. Like, take your 15 minutes, go jerk it off, and then tomorrow we can talk politics and like what really needs to happen. Yeah. But there was a lot of fear and regret back then to think that I wish all of it was gone so that... I could be taken more professionally. Mm -hmm. Flash forward to today, are we really being looked at less professional because of something that made us money? Yes, (laughs) unfortunately. It's just, but that's time. Time will change that. Yeah. Things are evolving. Yeah. But you found your way. You found a different way, you know, and it might have not been the same way. I think we... There's a lot we can do to sit and regret and to to be upset with ourselves with the decisions we made. But we only have control over the future of like what we can create. Yeah. You know, and I, it just sucks to see people get so like cycled down, trying so hard to be like, well, I could have done this differently. And I was like, you can do tomorrow differently. You yeah, know? it's it's always another experiment, another day. Yeah. Fail today, fail tomorrow, succeed the next day. Yeah. But you have to continue to try. Exactly. Yeah. I want to be in like Playgirl one day. That would be like really fun. That'd be awesome. You know? Yeah. I haven't heard of Playgirl for a while, <laughs> but could happen. Revamp. Let's Let's do bring it. It back. <laughs> bring, we're bringing Playgirl back. <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited about your journey of you you coming back. I know you've been back for a minute. It, your Twitter is already blowing up. Your page is blowing up. Your, your body is beautiful. You're so handsome and sexy, like not only that your aesthetic, but the way that you think and the way that you see the world, Thank which you. is like that much more exciting. Right for anybody that wants to follow him, you know, like like <laughs> if you're not already, you should. But before we kind of like bring things to the end, yeah. I want to know. We talked about like daddies or people that are giving back, and like you know what? Now that you see that you're aging, what are you doing for your community to give back? You know, I I think one of the starting points of that was getting myself on track. And now that I feel like moving forward, I feel a little bit more confident where I am and, you know, coming out of depression, getting into who I want to be again and represent. It's it's challenging to to want to give just to one specific part of our community. But slowly stepping, I'm doing the Hill Country Ride for AIDS in April. I'm riding 45 miles. It's my first year doing this, Mm -hmm. so still a lot of education for, you know, HIV and what really happened to our community. I I hope to educate a little bit more based on the the gap. Mm -hmm. I feel like our a large portion of our community is young and does not really understand our history. It's not being taught enough. Yeah. And educating kind of inclusivity is what I would really mm-hmm. like to start doing. Because each time I go home, I realize that I went over my, I, I, I don't want to say went over, but I get a little closer to my family because every time they see me, they get exposed to something that they normally don't see. And that's a culture that so many people just need to be exposed to. Yeah. We have to continue educating people. We have to continue to be... You know, bridging those gaps. Yeah. So. Okay. So you 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 mentioned the HIV thing. Yeah. And, and that that actually comes up a lot. Yeah. And I think that you know as we look as like a younger generations are coming in, like mm-hmm. HIV is not what it was before. Of, you know, we a lot of people lost a lot of their loved ones. Yeah. Think absolutely thankfully. Yes. But it's be, it's becoming a part of the history, right? Yeah. And is it? I, I think of, I've, we're getting a lot of, but I've heard a lot of feedback on like Hill Country is having a lot of trouble recruiting people and they're having a lot of trouble, you know, continuing to, to educate people and to get people to fill these positions or get grant funded or any of these right. things, you know? And w- w- what's your take on that? Do you think that we, we should continue to 
to educate and things that are that we are slowly moving out? Or I definitely what? think that we still have to continue mm-hmm. those traditions. They are part of our history and they're they're part of our what tell our our story. Mm-hmm. We need to understand what our community is going through so that we can recognize if it ever happens again. Mm-hmm. We have to teach the generations. It's a it's a sign of more it's i feel like it's respecting who you are you have to understand what previous generations went through so that you can understand what you don't have to go through the well the current generation that we're not going through hiv infections as rapidly as they once were i find that we're not doing that because the people who were affected, started foundations. Sure. Those foundations have continued to help fund the places that continue to provide the free health care for the youth to have HIV and medication, but then they don't bring it back to the sponsors who gave them that privilege. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think we should be protecting well, this this might just be me, but I, I think it like there. I definitely love that. I, I'm a complete advocate for for the systems of HIV. I have a lot of friends that are HIV positive, and even over the last few years, it's been crazy and people are not being educated, being afraid to sleep with them. And I think that's like really important sure. that someone that's being medicated with H, HIV medication is prob is you know more likely to be safer to have sex with yes. than someone that doesn't know their status. But I see like when you're saying like youth. Are, are going to these these installations mm-hmm. that's not necessarily true because they're not they're not contracting HIV anymore Correct. as much they're not they're not the medication that is preventing it's doing it, its job it, it is it's doing yeah. its job and that's fantastic but we have to remember why we are there no absolutely I, I agree with you on that I think the well I wonder how like we stay connected with the youth because it's be like us still like for say polio, we're like, okay, it happened. We're, we still, and there's, there's a really great vaccine for it. There's still people that do get it. Yeah. You know, as it continues to move out, like how do you start to focus on things that, that we can both share with our, our, our youth community? Um, so you can capture their, their attention, I guess. Cause like, yeah, it's, it's really hard. It is. He's like, that's not what I wanted to do. I know, but like, it brings up a weird question because mm-hmm. how long do how much history has to happen before it becomes something that the education system needs to teach? How, how much history does it have to be 50 years? Does it have to be 80 years? Like how much before it's almost like this is part of our culture that we're not talking about at all. We're not teaching about as Mm -hmm. maybe, and I don't want to misspeak because I don't know the education system as well as some people. It's not good. All right. Well, I mean, as far as what they're teaching in the classes, do yeah. you know? It's like, who knows Nothing. what they're teaching today? Yeah. But that is a form of history that we should be able to provide mm-hmm. and educate a little bit more of our youth on. Yeah. It just how do you engage is what you're asking. Mm-hmm. That's the golden question. How do yeah. you engage? I think it's really interesting you bring that up with the education system because like they're, they're not teaching as much things or a lot mm-hmm. of things. There's you know, book bans and all kinds of things sure. that are happening. LGBT community, there's still a huge battle there. And I think people are focused on like, how can we you know, get around that? So they, they probably are like looking at, I, I, as someone that's like in the middle, I guess, they're like, oh, all these people are, are spending all this time and invested in, in something that we've, that's been changed, right? When mm-hmm. we're like, when we're, they're fighting for additional rights and, and some people are happy where we are. They're like, okay, like, I think we're good. You know, like we don't need any more rights. We don't need any more genders. We don't need any more of this. Like I've, I've got what I needed. And it ends there. Kind of went total trail off from like where this is supposed to go. Well, I actually really, that's a, that's a great conversation to kind of dive into if you would like, because I do have some opinions on, on that. And I think that it's such a hard thing to talk about because no matter what you say, I feel like someone's going to be upset with your answer. Yep. It doesn't matter. It does not matter what I say. Someone is going to be upset. But in my opinion, in, in my opinion, I think that we as a community, and I talk as our community as the LGBT community, QIA plus all of us, but there are a lot of steps that we have made in a short period of time of our history from Stonewall to now and whatever ha- we had before that was just hiding. There's been 
so much history and so many gains that sometimes we have to stop and celebrate the gains as a community and support our community before we can make another step forward. And our community has tried to progress a little quickly sometimes. We, we're trying to, to leap so many th times, but take smaller steps, gain smaller successes, support your community, build your foundation, and then take the next step forward. I think where we hurt ourselves is trying to get too much too fast. And it's not our fault that we are the way we are, but trying to change these generations of people who will not ever accept us is a slow, steady process. Well, yeah, <laughs> probably have to wait for them to die out. But, <laughs> but no, I love the I love the way you say that, and I think like what really comes like the whole reason I started like doing podcasting, and it, it was really based on education. And there was a there was a conversation that I had with you know two transgender uh, ladies, and, and they had mentioned how a, a gentleman on on, the, on Sixth Street here in Austin had a, acknowledged how gorgeous they were passing mm -hmm. as women as a woman and that really upset it made them very upset mm -hmm. they were very angry with him and they, they acknowledged on how they you know kind of made him feel really bad for the approach the what he said and but my my question was like what, did, do you think that he meant it in, in a negative way you know and he so they didn't think so they didn't but i was like well what did you want him to say to you you know like well they don't i don't know but not that I was like, what we're missing is is to educate our people. Like, if you want people to say things a different way, redirect them. If people are having trouble with your genders, help redirect them. You, we, there's a lot of work to be done, and there's a lot of educating. Sure. And it, I think people really want to skip it. Like you're saying, they want to just like they just want those rights. They just want to have those things earned. But people need to understand. It's like, okay, this is not like passing is is not appropriate thing to say anymore. And I learned that on one of these podcasts. Yeah, you know, and like and that helped me identify that. But somebody, unfortunately, I'm not like learning about everyone else's things. Like if you're a drag queen, if you're a transgender, like that. Right. That's that's not my life. It doesn't mean that like I don't support you. But you do need to help educate me on it so that I can continue to be an ally for you. Exactly. And we, it, it, like you said, it goes back to educating. Yeah. You have to be willing as a community to stand up and say, okay, maybe that was a little offensive and you don't understand what you're saying, but let me explain to you for the next time. Because if we don't have a friendly conversation now, if you're willing to understand and hear me, this is how you speak to us, or this is how you would acknowledge me. And if you ever question it, say this. And it gives them a moment in their lives that someone took the time to just explain something that they were slightly confused about in a manner that was not threatening, it was not attacking. <clears throat> they weren't defensive immediately. Yeah. Like, let people ask questions. Please. You know? Like, please ask we, questions. I mean, at some point, you know, we are, we're queer, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, be fun. Be the rainbow. Be the light, you know? But yeah. some okay. people are going to ask questions because we are abnormal yeah. in their way, you know, in, in their minds. Yeah. I, I think, you know, people say it a lot about, like, bridal showers and people come in to the, the clubs all the time and they're like, I hate it because they, like, berate us and they think they were a club and that we're a show. And I was like... I understand, mm -hmm. but they're also like they're investing money back into our community. They're supporting us. And I have to say, like, and I ask people this all the time, who was the first person that you spoke to when you came out? Who was the first person that you trusted? Mm -hmm. Was it someone that was gay? No. no it, was, it was an ally, right? Was, yeah. yeah. And we just girl. forget that. Yeah. You know, and we isolate ourselves. And it was a girl or a guy <laughs> or whoever. Yeah. Like, and like, do you, do we just, it's so easy to just toss it out. Like, <laughs> now we want to be in our community. Right. You know, and I was like, just remember, like, to continue to ask questions, to allow yeah. people to ask you questions. I think, like, general gays do a good job at that. Sometimes we're a little sassy, but, like, to come out of your character, you know? Yeah. You know, just like working in, in porn, I'm sure people have a lot of questions. I know I they do. They do. They always have questions. And I <laughs> and they're just curious. Open book. Yeah. Of they course. just want to learn. It doesn't mean they're, <laughs> they don't like you. Right. And, you know, the, just because I explained it, how my life turned out, doesn't mean if you you follow the same path like everybody's lives are different it probably won't he, he has a really he had a good life <laughs> he had a pretty good path guys it, you, you probably won't get that position but the same way yeah we 
we sometimes I joke that one day I am going to release my book that's called like Needle in a Gay Stack. Yeah. I've been writing some like chapter titles. How do you, how do you feel about when people compare themselves like when like you're growing up with their age on how successful you were? They're like, "Oh, you're 26, I'm 26. Like I should be where you are." And you're like, "You don't know the blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> that I had go through to get here." Yeah, I think that it was it was difficult at a time because a lot of my peers, the my age group didn't did not have what I had at that point in time. And I believe that I lost friends for it, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can't compare. I'm sure you made some too. <laughs> you can't compare your life to anyone else because when I, I, I've gone through this point of my life that I've understand that I am consistently ahead of my time. I mentioned that earlier, and it's something that my therapist and I acknowledge that I've said before. Therapy, it's it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> but I am consistently ahead of my time. So as people were still developing their lives and their existence of, of their identification of who they were, I, I kind of went balls to the wall and came out when I was you know, 14, 15 years old and, and just kind of knew who I was. Mm-hmm. I was I was proud to be who I was and not conform to just being just hiding who I wanted to be. Like I started dating guys at 15, 16 years old and it was just normal just like girls were dating boys it just was normal. Yeah, I guess. Trying to make it normal. Mm-hmm. Of course, small town Texas did not think that and I've definitely <laughs> had my fair share of hate crimes galore, but Where'd you grow up? Like college station binary. Okay. Oh wow! Yes, yeah. not too. Not you were dating guys bad. at fifteen in college station. I was. Station? Yes. What? Yeah. Like college students or like? Actually, no. There happened to be a few other high school students okay. that were openly gay as well. Wow. So like, I had a a few boyfriends during high school. That's um, crazy. That's such a red city. Yeah, there were quite a few hate crimes that happened. Yeah. But you know, it just continued to build to. Uh, you know, the universe saw all the shit that you go through and, and the universe rewards you at some point in life too. It ebbs and flows. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So my, my last question before closing remarks is, do you, do you have anybody that like, that you're watching over now? Like that somebody was like that you're, that's in their youth, you're not necessarily their sugar daddy. And you're, like, <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, you're mentoring them and you're helping them through their life. You know, I like to mentor anyone that has come to me and, and, with any issues, you know, I don't think I have one specific person, Mm -hmm. but there are moments that I have with interactions with people, whether at a pool party or a night out or just casual encounters. There's always a friend that wants a little advice and I'm there to, I'm there to give it when I need to. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I think I definitely have asked you questions at pool parties before. <laughs> and <laughs> not, I'd love to Not that I'm a baby tree, but, you know. Yeah, I'd love to journey through it. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like, I have this relationship. <laughs> you know, and I was like, you've been in a long one, Listen, right? size, age, sex, it doesn't matter. People just want to be honest and genuine. And that's the, the genuine human connection is all we can hope for. Well, amazing. Well, I thank you so much for sharing with us today. I, I really appreciate you again for coming out. I, again, guys, if you guys aren't following him or if you want to be mentored, follow him <laughs> on, on his Twitter. Yeah. What is yeah. your Twitter? Uh, Porter underscore Westcott. Westcott. There you go. So follow him on his Twitter. You know, maybe send him a DM, but like, I'm looking for a mentorship daddy. Yeah. And he, you might just get lucky. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Find me some good management and then I'll, I'll serve my time to other things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll talk yeah. about that one separately, but yeah, yeah, another time. Well, is there anything else you want to close on that you want to tell the people that they should know about you? Mm. No? Any, any secrets? Any secret facts? I'm getting back into personal training. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also drop them a DM if you're looking for a personal trainer. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. 